Have any of you watching ever had a really bad day? Now, obviously, you know what I'm talking about. The kind of day when all your plans were sidelined and nothing went your way. And literally, all you want to do is throw a fucking hissy fit. And what I'm talking about here is how to respond to a really bad day. And I'm not talking about real tragedy. Right? I'm not talking about the death of a loved one or a horrible car accident or illness or war. This is not the topic of this reflection. I am more talking about those of us who feel like for the most parts, for the most part our, life, our lives are in flow. We're doing kind of what we love or working towards securing what we love and things are pretty good until they're not until you have a really bad day. I remember there was a comic book about the, the Joker from Batman. One particular graphic novel of the Joker said that the average man is but one bad day from going insane. <laughs> the Michael Douglas movie Falling Down, I think, chronicles what this kind of meltdown looks like. You know, a guy who's you know, had some pressure and stress in his life that's building up and a kind of dead-end job and maybe he has some aspirations that he has surrendered and he's sitting in a car and it's 105 fucking degrees and there's a fly that keeps fucking parking itself on his face and the traffic is not moving and you know what? He literally jumps out of his car in a homicidal rage and goes ape shit fucking bad shit crazy and I'm not saying that we respond that way but it was a great metaphor, it's a nice analogy, it's a nice visual for what our interior world often looks like in the face of a really bad day. Particularly if you're an artist, you can relate to this line of thinking. You might call it writer's block, you might call it that feeling of just not tapping into your flow, not finding your note. And it's so frustrating, right? First and foremost, let us admit that in these moments we become like children throwing a hissy fit and it's okay. Feel the fucking hissy fit, feel the frustration, feel the insidious worthlessness and self-loathing. Feel the pleasure in cursing yourself out. Feel the joy in calling yourself a useless fucking uncreative prick who's past his peak and who will never write another poem or another fucking chapter. You know what it feels like to doubt yourself, to go to fucking hell, right? The pit of despair of self-loathing and self criticism in the face of a really fucking bad day. It's like a kind of emotional constipation. It's like a fucking existential turd sitting in your bowels and you can't get rid of it. Where is the goddamn existential enema, right? What is the creative solution to the problem of a really bad day? What do you do in a moment of writer's block? What do you do in a moment when life is not in flow? Because I do a lot of videos about surfing, Flow, getting in the zone, right? Hacking into the pocket, stewarding the contents of consciousness, turning life into a work of art, a dynamic work project where you create and perceive your world simultaneously. This is awesome. I've done a thousand videos about it and people assume that I'm in that space most of the time and I'm not in that space most of the time. I aspire to be, I lean in that direction. I design for that to the best of my capacity, but sometimes my creativity just gets fucking sidelined. Sometimes the weather won't cooperate. Sometimes I'm just not metabolizing last night's food. Sometimes the air conditioner is too loud and the vibrations are fucking drilling into my skull when I'm trying to sleep at night. I'm not perfect and neither are you and it's okay, right? We're so fucking privileged as it is. Our ancestors would envy the lives we've got. We get to fly across the planet. We have food in our belly. We have a place to sleep every night. We are so privileged and we are so spoiled and we have lost our resilience. And the creative in us knows that resilience is not about what happens or how you react when things go your way, because that's easy and you should design for that, right? Design for things to go your way. 
But resilience is what you deploy, the interpretive frameworks that you deploy when things don't go your way, when you have a really bad day, when the weather doesn't fucking cooperate and you get a goddamn heat wave worse than in the last hundred years, right when you want it to make your next beautiful work of art. Resilience is how you choose to respond when things don't go your way. Are you able to have a sense of humor? Are you able to say this too shall pass? Are you able to allow yourself to fall apart? To trust that the present will supersede the past, that whatever fears or traumas or expectations you never negatively pre-configure and bring to the doorstep of every moment conspiring against your future self, that all of that will pass if you just surrender and you allow the present to supersede the past. That's where healing comes, right? When we shed our layers of neurosis, we move beyond the psychosis that is just neurosis pushed to its extreme. Let it all fucking go, right? In the words of Terence McKenna, just to wrap things up, nature loves courage. You make the commitment, and nature responds to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. You dream the impossible dream, and the world will not grind you under, it will lift you up. This is the secret. This is what all the philosophers, all the shamans, all the teachers, all the wise men, those who really touched the alchemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done. You hurl yourself into the abyss and you realize that it's a feather bed. That fucking says it all.